Jeannie Buss did a Q&A with NBA.com, and when she was asked if she expects the Lakers to make a major move this offseason, Buss said, nothing would surprise me. We're not making change for the sake of change. It has to be good. Basketball decisions that help us now and doesn't compromise our ability to deal in the future. Now, Wendy, do we expect the Lakers to actually improve this season? The most important part of that quote was the, was the last part, where she said uh, she doesn't want to do something that would hurt their ability to deal in the future, because that's what we're really talking about. What the yeah. Lakers have been uh, dealing with is their inability or, or re reluctance to dip into the few picks that they have on the on you know on their plate to to to, to improve this team, and and so you know Jeannie Buss, she, you know she's been very shrewd about one thing. Mm -hmm. uh, especially in her tenure as owner. And that is that she recognizes that she needs to maintain an open relationship with star players and always keep the Lakers as a welcoming place for stars. And so as she looks at this roster right now, she may not see a team, and she's not going to say this, she may not see a team that can win a championship, but she may see a team in two or three years that can win a championship. And so she's got to safeguard that. And here's the reality. Let's say that Anthony Davis is much healthier this year. He got bad luck last year. He came back from a knee injury. He was playing awesome, and then he hurt his leg again in sort of a freak injury. That's bad luck. LeBron had some injuries. Some of it was bad luck. Um, but here's the thing. They won 33 games last year. Yeah. So even if those two guys are healthy, and let's say that the, the, you know, the, the handful of young guys that they signed when they had one of the oldest rosters in the NBA history, th that that younger roster plays better defense. Let's say they win. Let's say they win 12, 13 more games. Now, I think that's pie in the sky. But let's just, for a moment, say that they have a brilliant season and they win 12 or 13 more games. That's still play-in zone. Yeah. You know, you look at the teams in front of them, yeah, the Jazz are sort of rebuilding. They're going to come back. The Spurs are rebuilding. Those are two teams that finished in front of them. They're going to come back. But they've got the, the Portland Trailblazers coming from behind them. The Sacramento Kings, who've had a very quietly, very impressive summer, coming from behind them. And if you go and look at the recent history of the Western Conference, you've needed, and there was a couple of years there where it was COVID impacted, so the actual win totals weren't the same, but you needed about 47, 48 wins to get out of the play-in zone. That would be the Lakers winning 14, 15 more games. I suppose it is possible with the talent that they have, but if you're Jeannie Buss, and you're looking at that, I can see how you're saying, look, we're going to try to have a great season. We're going to try to have a rebound season. We're going to do our best. But I am not mortgaging the future for a team that, that, that I don't 100% believe in can get up there into that zone. And that's one of the things that I took away from her comments. I think they would love to get Kyrie Irving. That would, be, that would change their dynamic. Then maybe we could talk about them winning 15, 17 more games and maybe getting the five seed or something like that. But they're only going to do it if the price makes sense and, as Jeannie said, doesn't impact what they can do in the future. Well, in the future is kind of what they've been focusing on and having, you know, arguably, and what was criticized as the worst season in franchise history. A lot of criticism here. Now, Dominique, which Laker gets the most unfairly criticized? Well, I mean, I think Russ is a little yeah. unfairly criticized because, like, it's not his fault he makes a lot of money, and we all knew what he was when he got there, like, expecting to be something different. But the most unfairly criticized, I think, is LeBron James. Like, it feels mm -hmm. odd to me that before they signed LeBron, I think Julius Randle was probably their best player. They were not making the playoffs. They had no realistic uh, look at winning a championship. And then they sign LeBron, and he brings them, not only does he bring them a championship, but he also brings them Anthony Davis, which is a building block to win championships in the future. So, like, and it, it feels as though, like, a lot of the criticism around LeBron is he's making too much, uh, or he's controlling the front office decisions too much. Like, you knew what it was when you signed up. That's what he did in Cleveland. That's what he wanted to do in Miami, and that's part of the reason why he went to Cleveland. It seemed like a pretty, like, uh, obvious deal. To me, it feels like Lakers fans and anyone who's complaining is like they got some coffee and are complaining that it's hot. Like, this is what it is. LeBron James delivered on his end of the bargain. He yeah. gave you more than you could have anticipated. A championship in a young-ish star to build around 
going forward. To me, anyone, any Lakers fans or anyone in the front office that is complaining about LeBron, it seems to me that they are reneging on a deal that seemed pretty obvious. And if one end of the deal is being held up, whereas LeBron is holding up his end of the deal, then you got to take the price that comes with it. And part of that price is you're going to have to sign a lot of players from clutch. And if that's what you have to do, oh, well, you got a banner out of it in Anthony Davis. You're welcome. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.